Hey, hi everyone. We'll probably give a minute or two for folks to join and then we'll get started. Sounds good. Good morning, good evening. Briefly sharing the meeting notes document. So if you can please add yourself as an attendee right here where it says attendance. Thank you, Ricardo. I think we're good to get started. Uh, and we have Q Clipper on the agenda today. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, who exactly the presenter is. So we get started with Cube Clipper if they're ready. I don't think anybody from Cube Clipper is here. If not, I think we can you know, get started with the second item on the agenda. Sounds good, sounds good. Uh... Yeah, I just addressed it because it was there on the agenda, but yeah, I think let's get started with the LFX insights. So Kieran, floor is yours. Great. Uh, yeah, hi, everyone. Um, really appreciate you uh, taking the time to meet with us. For those of you who don't know who I am and who Jordan is, um, I'm the product manager or one of the people in product for LFX insights, a part of the Linux Foundation. Um, I'll show you what we'll be looking at today, but Jordan and I have been asked by uh, internally and then also the CNCF and things like that to um, help with the annual review process. So one of the one of the big problems what, that we were asked to come in and, and start to design the solution for was, hey, annual review is it's there's too many projects. It takes too long. Um, it's really difficult. So can you help create a, create a product that would um, help to solve for that. We said, yeah, let's let's go learn about this and see what we can do. We read a bunch of tickets. We read a bunch of feedback. We read a lot about the existing process. And what we came to was we realized, oh, what they really want isn't an annual review. They don't want to just go to the doctor one time a year and let and see how the project is. They want really kind of to have more um, health metrics that would um, in, let you know how healthy you are throughout the year. So we started to change focus instead of saying, hey, let's try to go rebuild the annual review process um, that they're, the current state process that um, the TOC is using. Um, let's actually think up a level and go, hey, what's the essence of what's going on here? It's what they want um, the TOC and by and by def, uh, by in addition to the tag wants to know, okay, how healthy is this project? How can this help me get to a faster place about making some sort of recommendation? Or can we send either the project maintainers, contributors to a single place that would give them a, a quick insight into the health? So our goal was how do we reduce the time it takes to understand how healthy a project is um, to under, under a minute or under two minutes? And so I'll, I'll show you... Um, what we're in the early stages of designing. Um, but ag again, I'm in product. Jordan's on the call. Jordan Clive is our designer. Um, he's been with me on this pro uh, problem along the way. And so what we're hoping to get today from each of you is feedback. 
um, you know, what would be the things that you're looking to understand um, when reviewing a given project that you'd want to know that the system could do rather than having to go and maybe do this heavyweight um, looking at all the data and then kind of coming up with this report and doing all that kind of stuff. So I'll show you a little bit of where this product would lie today that for those of you, um, and again, it's okay that you haven't seen anything. I didn't send anything across on purpose because we just want that that feedback. But what I'll um, do here is I'll share my screen. And anything else to add that I didn't ca uh, capture? No, no, not for me. Okay, cool. So um, can everyone see my screen? Yep. Great. So we have the um, the insights tool. And what I've done is I went to CNCF and I've just pulled up a random project. So in this case, container D. Um, this product is our insights tool. It is going to, for any given selected time period, um, I have 90 days selected, show uh, the contributors, are they growing, are they declining, the commits, the issues, the pull request, forks and stars, as well as some uh, best practice information um, to get us to get a score to move that needle, and then also different charts that would show you, hey, um, you know how how dependent is your code on a small number of people? How dependent is your co uh, uh, the open source project on uh, certain organizations who are doing those changes? Um, so this kind of gives you an overview of like just raw data. We also have some velocity, productivity, and then mailing list data. If it, you know, I know some certain CF projects, CNCF projects don't use mailing lists, but in the case that some do, um, we also have different reports where you can dive into more contributors, organizations, activities, where this product would lie is over here. We would also have, um, instead of having just overview velocity product, we would also have a health. So we'd be on the project and we'd have the health of the project. So how that would look would be something like this, oh, pardon me. Um, so we'd have the, again, name of the project, the, the title. We would wanna have um, one indicator of, hey, what's the overall trend of the project from a health perspective? And then what's the, the meter? Um, we have some just typical stuff that you might need in um, doing, doing things linked to the project, linked to the GitHub. Um, but where the where we spent the most amount of the time on so far, which we need the most refinement on, is in this health checklist. So this is trying to show how is the project either matured or how healthy it is is it over time. Um, today we have it in this checklist standpoint where we have these questions, um, and then it's either happening or it isn't. Um, we need to refine this this area. But the goal would be to get to give one kind of quick overview. Um, on the project and understand in a short order um, what's happening. Um, and then again, a little bit of uh, a ability to see over time how the project is growing um, from either metrics. We also have a way to expand that into the individual um, metrics to try to understand that. Let's see, where's the refresh? Um, and then to see a breakdown of the contributor diversification between like the top 10 orgs, other orgs, commits, and then just some other data we have down here that you may need to look at just from a health perspective. But um, the vision of this product would be within that insights tool to be able to click on that health page. And again, quickly, instead of waiting for the annual report, now we also would be able to do um, an annual snapshot. So every year, or every, you know, every six months, we would take a snapshot of what this page should look like in time. Um, so again, we both click that here, or you can either click each of these um, links to see, okay, what did it look like in, uh, in 20, 21, 22, other than this point in 23. But this is more to be like a health, um, the best way to put it is like the vital signs, um, as opposed to like a one time a year, like, where's this, where's this project at? So um, any questions, thoughts, um, any any idea of um... how do you? Yeah, question. So thanks for this. So how do you calculate the the health meter? Well, so today it's just a roll up. Of, it'll be a roll up of these checks. Um, it's just it's a vision design to help us to think about what that would look like. So again, something that had two or three um, would 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 be sorry. Would be lower um something that had mid would be mid and something that had 
more checks would be would be stronger. The trend would be over time. Uh, does to, does it look like um, are things changing? So um, I have a follow up question for you, Ricardo. I, I'm actually not exactly sure who on this call is like our target user. Um, I'm uh, my question is, are there ever scenarios where you have to flip through a lot of projects in a short amount of time? Uh, yeah, I think when we're doing reviews, like sandbox projects reviews or or um, or we're working with the incubation due diligence, even graduation, we'd like to understand uh, the project uh, maturity and and for example between the stages right this is uh, maybe a project that is an incubation and it's trying to go for graduation and you want to see what has changed between the stage and before going to the next one yeah um, and, and hopefully you want to see like an upward trajectory in terms of contributions yeah or if you, or maybe you want to take a look at um, the overall health to see red flags. Uh, mm -hmm. So, for yeah. example, like uh, it's a single organization that has been contributing to the project over the last whatever six months, and only a single organization, right? So, and 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 that may not necessarily mean that the projects may not be mature, but but it's also you know something to ask the project maintainers and to elaborate and trying to get an understanding it's always never uh binary like zero or one it's just there's a lot of gray in between right 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 so um uh, first of all um if there's anything here that you like you don't understand why it's there or you you can see that it's just clearly not what you would need um we don't take like but you could not offend us like there's we're, we're so open to any and all feedback that you have to offer. Um, we're hungry to learn. Um, now, I'll just share with you an assumption that uh, we made, and you can tell me how valid or invalid that assumption is. Um, because um, your part-time volunteer work with this, is my understanding, um, is uh, you want to be efficient. There, there might be a scenario where you don't want to go through a, a whole page of a lot of data. You just want to get a quick, quick snapshot. Are they doing okay? Okay, the health meter. Okay, I'll move on to the next one. So it would be like, a how, how is this project doing in less than 10 seconds? And that was why the health meter is there. Yeah, that's great. I think, in my opinion, yeah, that, that gives you an overview. But, but it, it would be good to understand maybe some of these... Uh, check marks what they are i don't know if they're different for every project or they're like the same for every single project so that also may be um you know worth understanding uh, ahead of time right but but so i think there there's there's a little bit of um you know from from the people using the tool uh, education that they need to go through right so that so that i can actually make it more efficient Sorry, Liam, you have a, you had your hand raised. Not at all. Um, so I, uh, I think that this data is incredibly useful to a number of personas. Um, so, uh, you know, I actually, I'll describe it from a few different personas that I play. Um, so I'm the, one of the founders of Wasm Cloud. Uh, and uh, I also played a role in Cloud Custodian and other projects. Um, so it's helpful to have this data. Uh, one, you want to show it to others. Um, uh, I invest in projects, um, so it's helpful to sort of understand who's involved, um, to find peers, to collaborate, um, to know who's using it, um, uh, to understand is it reliable. Uh, so this data is super useful. Um, uh, within the CNCF, though, I think there is um, a lot of other existing efforts that this overlaps with. So, uh, for example, um, there's uh, DevStats is included uh, with all uh, projects um, within the CNCF, um, which is, you know, scraping a lot of the upstream metrics here. So I'll link right to Wasm Cloud's dev stats, for example. So that's a yeah. portal that's automatically created that gives me um, a lot of trending dashboards around, um, you know, users and contributors and stuff like that. It's not as pretty as this, uh, by the way. I love your UI. It's gorgeous. 
Um, and it doesn't uh, certainly doesn't give me like a single dashboard um, kind of view. Um, uh, uh, secondly, on the health checks, there's a separate separate CNCF tool, although I was uh, looking for it. I can't seem to find it at the moment. One of our other leads, Brooks Townsend, configured it of like a best practices checker that audits, um, you know, a bunch of technical attributes for our Clomonitor, project. A CLO monitor CLO, thing? Yeah, CLO monitor um, that, you know, we have to hit 100% compliance with or something along those lines. And I think there's even another tool that's been launched in that space that we have to that we have to hit. Um, uh, uh, now, I think there are still a lot of gaps across even um, that footprint. So for example, um, I use and love orbit.love. Um, if you are familiar with that product for open source community management. And a lot of the dashboards that you have in here around like project growth and health and organizational contributor diversification really remind me of, of that. I think um, if I were to take a step back and think about some of the unfulfilled needs that I have across my various personas, um, one of the most fundamental is um, uh, honestly the interactivity, you know, like Slack integrations, um, dev stats and all these other tools are great, but what would, what would be really incredible would be is if for all CNCF incubating projects, you know, um, I could get some additional telemetry beyond what I get via my GitHub integrations. You know, that would be that would be great, you know, or to somehow cross reference all the rich metadata the CNCF has about GitHub developers, because when we all go into CNCF events, you know, we yeah. disclose all kinds of other information. If I could like tie that and pull that information back or somehow have a portal or dashboard that took you know, all the unique point of view that the Linux Foundation has and marry that with open source, that would be way more valuable to me than um, uh, than um, I think some of this other data. Although, and I do also want to say your UI is gorgeous. The design is amazing. And I love how you've really pulled all this um, together in like just a single dashboard point of view. If I had this for Wasm Cloud, I would point people at it all day long. Yeah, that, and that's the goal with having this one product. Um, we are uh, aware of dev stats and CLO monitor and yeah. working. That's part of what we've been asked to use as somewhat reference points. Again, I know on, so for instance, in the insights tool, that's where we mm. got this best practices is very similar to that, mm. um, where we'll be, you know, I think candidly, and I don't know when or how, but I candidly think insights is in a perfect world, um, gets to the place where, oh, well, yeah, devs, we don't even really quite need dev stats in the same way we do anymore, or we don't need CLO monitor anymore. Um, and then this is more like a, a single pointed, like, okay, for another usable page in to make insights kind of valuable and have a hook into something that would work both for the TOC, the tag, CNCF, but really the broader Linux Foundation products to be able to go, okay, like how healthy is this um, is this sandbox or this incubating project? Um, so thank you for sharing that. We'll look at orbit.love and appreciate the feedback. Um, I, if I could maybe just give a couple more. If you go back just yeah, two, two screens ago um, on your health monitor page, scroll on down. It looks like you've got some cool okay. calls to action here. Yeah. So it said open an issue. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So that it would link to my project and then open right. a pull like a uh, like a to do or a, yep. an issue in my. All right, that's that's pretty awesome. Do you yeah, know what's already this already this is already like kind of working, so I can do that right now. That's pretty yeah, awesome. And, and do you know, it'd be awesome and also kind of terrifying, and would probably mm -hmm. um really um uh really I think be insightful is. Um, if you uh, took uh, this data you were collecting across this the landscape.cncf.io mm -hmm. and then mapped it across um, and created like charts across all projects. And that yeah. way you could sort of compare and say like, what is the velocity of these projects compared to each other? That would be the most insightful thing because you could take like a category and say, you know, show me CI tools and show me what CI tools have momentum and show me what CI tools are declining. That yeah. is going to be that you want to talk about what every um, every persona in the CNCF really wants is the velocity. They want to know, like, 
what, where do I invest my time and money and effort? And like, mm. you know, what's the competitive, um, uh, yeah. trade-off here? Like what's, what's the market telling me? And like, that is the, that's like the insight you could surface out of, of the developers and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe what we'll do. Um, so Jordan has a foundation. We were, we've worked on a foundation level design that does exactly that. We have that, um, that maybe after this, we kind of wrap feedback up on this. We could show you quickly to get feedback because we do, yeah. we have played with that problem a little bit, but we were invited to shift off into something different and then now kind of onto this. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Kai, uh, did you want to go? Thanks. Kai -san. Uh, hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And uh, I'm Kai Shen and I maintain several open source projects. Uh, yeah, I think uh, this, um, I think this tool is very useful for the, for the user to adopt a new project. And I want to propose a new use case from the contributor perspective, because uh, I have already a mentor, maybe 10 to 20 people to work on the open source mm -hmm. and uh, for their first open source PR. And uh, a lot of them will ask me the question is that, which project that should I work on? So I am wondering that I maybe can add a new metrics uh, to measure that is it friendly for the new contributors? Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, like uh, how many good first issue, and yeah. uh, the second is that, uh, what's the uh, what's the maintainer, uh, distribution? Is this on, only for from the one of the company? Uh, if some some of the project that have a lot of commits, but, uh, for example, I mean I I work on Ray and the Kubernetes, mm -hmm. uh. Uh, Ray, I think uh, most of the eighty percent of the committer are the are from the our company any scale, so it may not so that's easy for a contributor to contribute a PR if yeah. they have connection with our company. Yeah. So I will not. I will not. Uh, I will not suggest my friend that if they are the if they are very new for the open source community to contribute to Ray. Right, because uh, it is very very difficult if they don't have a connection. So I'm wondering that uh, if there are any metrics that can help the help the people that want to contribute to their first open source project, can measure mm -hmm. which one is the friendly one. Yeah, I think it would be very helpful. Yeah, if, that makes sense. It's not there. It's, sure. So it's not the array project's not there because it hasn't been contributed yet to the CNCF, right? But uh... Okay. Yeah. So, okay. um, so I'll kind of show you quickly. I, I think that's a huge, uh, it's a very good point, um, is a friendliness for new contributors. Um, some things we do have is we do have, um, somewhere, let's see. Um, we have a leaderboard where people can see, um, commits, open issues that we also have a leaderboard from companies, um, per project, um, as well as, um, again, is it is it a is it a technology that your company um, relies on, or are you a different a different or different org? Um, but I hear what you're saying that that how friendly something would be new, helping people to find stuff would be good, and that could be something that would also help to show. I don't know where it would go, but it's a really good point. Um, we do have again this velocity um, chart that helps see more things from a. From that, but somewhere I thought we had a code review. One second, so, um, we had I think it's contributors. We have that, yeah, active and new. But I'm seeing what you're saying. It's like it's like, hey, how do we, how do we make it easier for someone to come in and know what should I go, what should I go work on, and that would be very beneficial for a contributor to know. Okay, hey, what what should I go and work on that's going to make would be a good project for me or my company or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and the next point is that I think mm -hmm. some of the new, some of the people interested in comp uh, open source is because they want to learn some new skill, for example, like Kubernetes. Yeah. So uh, I think they first is filled out that, oh, this one used the Kubernetes mm -hmm. and then uh, check if this community has the velocity or not. So okay. I think if they have, if we can have a tag, uh, on the project that they can filter out uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the skill that they want to learn. I think it will be helpful. 
Okay. Yeah, I like the skills. That makes sense. Um, because that would be I could see where that would be useful to wanna be where would my skill what projects would my skills be um useful? Yeah, thank you. I just Hey, uh, hi, Kira. So thanks for the presentation. Uh, I love the dashboard, especially the UI. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the crux set of uh, insights that it provides. I don't have specific feedback, but from a, from a tag perspective and from a next steps uh, uh, viewpoint, I, I wonder how we can really take this forward from an annual sandbox review perspective in terms of like integrate it with the workflow of annual sandbox reviews, wherein the health met meter over here gives me like a certain idea of how I can uh, carry out with the review, but uh, like actually come up with a workflow, right? Like we take certain items from this insights and then certain items which are required from a uh, reviewer perspective and then come up with a review, right? Like. So I, I wonder if we can also, uh, you know, present this to TOC and see how we can like, you know, craft this into a workflow for annual sandbox review from like tag contributors, tag reviewers, so that could, this could help them. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, I've showed this to the TOC and they um, they liked it as well. I think the two things that would need to happen for us to get a, to iterate on the design would be are these are these questions the right questions and this is, is this the right format because i know from a data perspective my engineers are like hey well like currently like in this in this current world for insights we don't have build and release data so the first question i would need to come up with something different um as far as adoption our github starts growing over time that would always be checked in this way the way it's currently written because there's no you know it's really our github starts growing by more than 10 percent over the last year or something like that because we need to have metrics on that um we would need to define what does it mean to have a new project adopters that are diverse and then because we do have that data but um it would be more from the contributor perspective um this one we have we could get that but again it's what we would need to know is what are the things that a system could go get that would save you time that would make your job easier that you could just look at this one place or look at these different charts that we have and get everything, you know, get you 70 or 80% of the way done um, where, yeah, there's always going to be some human um, recommendations, but instead of, instead of your meetings today, going and pulling all that data manually, going to dev stats, going to CLO monitor, going to GitHub, okay, messaging the maintainers, doing this back over this way, instead of doing all that, what if we could just draw it to one place that got you 70 or 80% of the way there? And then while you're on your meeting, you go, okay, this is our project and we're looking at it. Okay. Hey, can somebody reach out to Adlick and tell them this, that, and can somebody work with them on their open working practices? Yeah, I got that one. Okay, great. Let's moving on. And you go to the next one. Okay. This project's looking like we might be wanting to recommend it go from sandbox to incubated or incubated to um, graduated. Um, okay. That's going to take a formal write-up. We can draw from this, information but it's not going to replace it but because we I, I do know we, jordan and i first started going down the workflow path and we were told um hey we don't want to go down the workflow path because annual reviews are going away like we're not even going to do them anymore really you know um and so that's kind of why we're trying to do this always on thing that you could use to have those discussions and maybe have them at a quicker pace um but that's what we would need to know is is what are the things that you would have to see here if you have a list or if you have a, a presentation or if you have a, hey, these are the things we know we'd want. I'd want to know these. It, 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 you'd be like, Kieran, I don't care about these 10 questions. I want to know these five things. Awesome. What are those five things? So we can go put a design to that uh, or 10 things that you'd, if, hey, if you guys could find this and this and this, that would make our job 80% of the way done. It was so easy. We could run through these projects in one meeting and not go spend two, three, four, five hours per project, um, each person divvying up. I think you guys had like 20 something in your last, uh, in the last round of reviews. It's just too many. It's, it's just too many for anybody to do. And so that's what I would look that I think that's the next thing that Jordan and I, it's like, hey, if you like this direction and this is valuable, awesome, then how would you guys customize it? Because we don't today, but the final thing I'll say is we don't know what we don't know. We've never been in a TOC tag meeting talking about a project we don't really know what we're looking for we're, we're we're 
at best guessing and reading a bunch of information and trying to consolidate. So the more prescriptive you can be about what you would need to know on a project, then um, we could then take that and and maybe make an iteration on this this design and refine it, further refine it, I guess, and make it even better for for your purposes. Sounds sounds good. Uh, so regarding the adoption, I have a follow up question. Yeah. Uh, usually products, uh, projects, and this adopt or adoption file in the repository. Are you all also passing that file and taking data from that? Yeah, so that would be, we would look right here for that, which I forget where adoption is, but it's, um, it should be, it's in, it should be, we would look to this best practices, which ha, which would have it here somewhere. I haven't looked at this one in a while. It would usually have this in here where we'd have adoption or we'd bring it to here. And then adoption would, um, similar to how, yeah, I think it's the CLO monitor has it, um, add like an adopters, or I don't know where the adoption file is, like maybe they don't have, yeah. But we would have something similar to this where, um, where once we had it, it would we want to point it to in our product where we could bring people and have that. Basically anywhere I can bring it where it would make sense I would bring it to here to have it then be updated in one place that's easy and then have it pull automatically um, into then every other part of the product. Sounds good. So, so in that's what you see here is if we, we what we're trying to go for on this checklist is say, here's the source, right? So if C on GitHub, here's here's where we can prove that that's checked and here's where, here's where we show our work. Here's where you read, you go to that, best practices thing to like learn how to get that checked um or hey here's here see this on see this on github or see this way, wherever why why that see so go see why why stars are not growing at the rate or adoption isn't happening at the rate um is kind of the thought that's like this call to action show your work it, is what we're trying to do here like a source we're trying to source basically source source the information Yeah, a question. So regarding adopt adopter. So it's one one of the things that you look at in incubation and graduation is the number of end users and how active these end users are. So you mm -hmm. can look at the um, adopters file and you you can look at a list of end users. Mm -hmm. But it would be helpful to have some information about how active these end users are mm -hmm. if they're using it in production environments, for example. Uh, so that's something that the TOC and the tax look at when they okay. do the due diligence, like, you know, uh, is this a user uh, using the project in whatever, 20 environments in production, dev tests, uh, uh, what, are the, what are they found? with the project uh, with respect to scalability or with missing gaps. Uh, so those are some of the things that they look at. And so additionally, it, during the incubation uh, stage, uh, there are few interviews that the TOC members conduct with the end users to, you know, to try to understand how they're using the project. Okay. And so when you say adoption, I'm hearing you talk about like um, contributors or really not maintainers, contributors who are who have taken the project, who have started using it and are at these organizations or have this many environments set up with that. And that and you would want to see that as a number and, and maybe growing over time or how would you Yeah. Yeah. Like like well number of end users is one thing and, and that's just kind of like one dimension. But then you have also the dimension of whether these end users are actually really using the project because you can actually list uh, and then user there, but they could just have like a like a mini environment uh, in development, or it's just like a single engineer actually using the project, right? But are they actually uh, using this project in a large scale environment, for example, right? And then you can tell like the project is very mature, right? So like Kubernetes, right, is being used in uh, so many organizations and so many different production environments. Mm -hmm. Does that, I, I don't know where you it will get that information. I mean, it's kind of hard actually. Yeah, to... I'm not worried about, like I'm not today worried about where or how, I'm just trying to understand more the 
what would be valuable and then hey let's go see if we can get it if we can great if we can't yeah. then it's like what's the next best thing hey I, I get the vision of where we're trying to go and then um that would help us to be able to go okay hey we can't quite get you there but we can get you sort of that way um we can get you this much of the way there um at least we could get you maybe like a, a list that show it's growing show you the names so then you're able to contact the top 10 or top five you know yeah so yeah, the first step will be the number of end users or adopters. I, I, I mean, are they yeah. growing? That's just kind of like a first yeah. step, right? Basically, yeah. Okay. Sorry, uh, you have... uh, yes. Um, I just I noticed the site is publicly available. Um, yeah. It looks like there's some test data that's sort of imported into here. Um, any rhyme or reason for you know what's imported into the CNCF category? It looks like a subset of the data. Uh, in the product, this product. Yeah, yeah. So I would say it's beta. Um, CNCF has driven what is or isn't onboarded, and so Chris and Daniel Crook are working with us to do that. So so far, we've had eighty-eight projects. I don't know exactly the why and what, and I know the numbers don't match. Like we're aware of some, but there's. There's okay. bucks, so like it's, I'm, I'm super aware. Um, okay. I do, there's 88 projects in today. Um, these ones are the ones that have been put in. Is there one, is there anything that's in here that you're interested in? I, I just didn't see the, one of the projects, uh, either a couple of the projects that I work on that I, where yeah. I, you know, really familiar with the details. I was going to go in and, you know, are, compare yeah, what, to- Do you have a, a name of any of, the, are any of them in there? Or Boston not? Cloud and Cloud Custodian. I, I, I've spent a lot of time on, neither one's in. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I can, I can, I can see, I have, I have that somewhere where I can look and see when that's coming. Um, but it's, it's, it's coming. Um, it's okay. Yeah. I yeah. was just, I was going to just volunteer to just dive a little bit and then compare it yeah. to like what I see in orbit and what I see in my other dashboards yeah. and see. Yeah. And that's, I would even say, I, I don't even know that we're ready for that. We're, we're getting there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's sort of Danielle, um, did you have any thoughts? And, and then Liam, once it is ready, I'll be happy to, to, to do that. Great. How do we send you contact information or how do we subscribe to stay up to date? Is there a channel we can join? Um, there is the, the Linux foundation. Let me figure that out first. I'll work with Rajas or Rajas on, um, on when we might be ready. Um, and then just kind of ping it in and say, Hey, we're ready to, for you to take a look at it and tell us what's good, bad, ugly about it. Um, okay. Yeah. Sorry, Danielle. Cool. Um, first of all, I love it. I mean, it uh, seems like a really good tool and um, UI is like great. So it's very accessible. I tried tons of them. So <laughs> um, yeah, uh, one thing that like I have a couple of uh, thoughts all around the place. So I'll try to go one by one. So um, when trying to find out who, uh, who are the most active users, it would be nice. Oh, I have this reaction set very mm -hmm. Um It would be nice to 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 be able to filter the users from the organization itself. So yeah. I don't know if that's like possible to have some filters around that. Yeah, let me uh, see. Yeah, so you so you'd be like here. I, I, yeah, we have the contributors. Um, I do know we can download it as a CSV. Um, I don't know if this is working right now, so bear with me. Um, but we can download the contributors, and I believe they have the oh the that's part of the problem. Okay, GDPR and compliance. Unless somebody has expressly told us that they work at this place and have given us their data, then we can. But otherwise, we can't match them. But we can do things like, hey, here are the most active people oh and here's the most active organizations um and then you can sort of but yeah i i think we had we had that we had we were doing that in um gdpr we got like they're like hey that's that's not we're not supposed to do that now when i came mm -hmm. in i was like actually it was a privacy concern so we can give you a list of contributors and we can give you a list of organizations and we can give you a list of contributors and organizations for people who have expressly given the linux foundation their data and said yes you can you know, I'm this person and I work at this place and here's my consolidated profile. But otherwise, we don't do the one to one matching, um, and, but we do enrich the data um, in a way that is compliant. I think is the best way to put it. Yeah. 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 
another thought that I had, it would be like, it's quite uh, like if you look at the map of all the landscape yeah. of CNCF, it's quite massive. It would be like, oh yeah, I don't know if that's something that you want to 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 do, but it would be nice to kind of see, hey, what is actually this project? And instead of like, you know, going and searching and doing research, kind of like have it integrated, but you know, just like, yeah, <laughs> that would be great. But I don't know if you want to even go down that path. We do at some point. So Jordan and I have, so um, we've joined in the last few months and we've been able to touch certain things and certain things we haven't had a chance to get to yet. Um, I would say the project list in the current manner it is would need some, it needs some refinement, I guess would be the best way to say it. Cause we can get to these places where uh, yeah, I look at a list of projects and it just, it's really messy and kind of difficult. Um, most people actually, from what, what I've been told and seen so far, a lot of people just search for their projects. So they'll be like, okay, yeah, like, um, like I work for Zephyr, they'll search for Zephyr and they'll just deep link right mm -hmm. to Zephyr and they don't really care about the foundation view. But are you, would, would you, would you all ever look at that as like a foundation and want to know things or would that be a use case where you want to see things at the foundation sort of compared against each other? I, I can you know, sort of answer some of that. I, I, yeah, so for example, we are working with the LF data and AI or mm -hmm. starting to work a little bit with them. Uh, yeah. And, and there are some projects that have actually expressed interest yeah. in joining the CNCF from like move from there to the CNCF because they right. seem to be more aligned uh, with cloud native. Yeah. So, that that's something that we can look at, right? And right, but the yeah, I think it might be useful to understand how these projects are aligned to these different foundations too. But I don't I don't know what type of data you would actually use for that. Mm. Yeah, um, today they're aligned by the way that the Linux Foundation and CNCF chooses to organize the products, no, the um, projects. And right. so they're currently done by foundation. And so, yeah, you kind of have this um, almost Amazonian structure where, you know, you have AWS and it has tons of stuff, but then you also have retail and you have other things. And that's kind of how it's uh, distributed, but then, and then we have a shared service. So, you know, like LFX or other things are kind of a shared service sitting in between like, yes, I, our products have to support CNCF vertically, but then also other foundations horizontally. And so it gets to be at times um, where we're yeah. doing two things, but yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. And that's what Jordan and I were wondering, is there ever a time somebody would, is most people looking per the, so we have like a, a structure, we have like a grandparent, parent, child structure uh, um because uh, some foundations can also have projects but some projects can be almost like many foundations and so we have this interesting structure thing that happens um but we're working on that and we're trying to figure out like to display it in a, in a way that makes sense but so you so as users would you as the tag runtime you might be more interested to look at like okay what does cncf has going on as a foundation that could be a use case for 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 what you guys yeah. would do. yeah more specifically yeah cncf right uh, yeah. but then, yeah that's another i mean i just I was trying to explain why would you use like a different foundation right the yeah. for uh yeah the yeah so the you there, there are a lot. There's a lot of overlap between the different projects too, and the different foundations too. Maybe I think yeah. so. That, that's that's also another area that uh, can be confusing right, for some some people. Yeah, but, but again, I don't know if this is going to be available for for like everybody or or this is eventually just it will be. Yeah, for the TOC or, or the attack. This will or, be available for everybody at at some point. Something we'll put out. Um, I mean, it's quote unquote beta available now, but uh, there's still I mean, candidly quite a few issues. So, and Danielle, did you have any more points that you wanted to make? I want to make sure you um, Just an interest, how is a contribution defined here? Because like, it's like, could be yeah. defined a bit differently depending to who, you know. Yeah, let me go back. Structure it. Yeah. Um, that, I can show that in container D. Um, so, 
a contributor currently is an active contributor as an individual performing a task such as commits, issues, pull requests during the time period you selected is how we're defining a contributor today. And then we also have a link to show a deep, like more about what, what how, how and why, but that's currently how we're defining a contributor. Is it also like commenting on uh, existing issues on pull requests, merging, you know, like any type of activity that they could do or? Yeah, so it would be, let's see, contributor activities. I think it's this. Okay, no, I'm just wondering, it, it doesn't matter like that much. Okay, yeah, no worries. Any other yeah, questions? Yeah, I think that's useful to determine for example, you you could be uh, reviewing a project that you know shows up as multiple organizations supporting the project, but there may be just one group of or one organization and one or two contributors from that single organization doing most of the commits of code, yeah. for example, and then the rest of the organizations are actually doing maybe code reviews, right? So yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's like um, this accused case of cloud events. Like we have, you know, with these two contributors really doing the majority. Um, but then, yeah, there's people that are, are doing other things, you know, other reviews and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, you can bring it up as a point in the due diligence, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, just throwing out another idea around there is you know, purely out of uh, tag interests would be, it would, it would be good to just actually label every project which tag or multiple tags that it falls under just from uh, a perspective of like, just knowing like, you know, that this is in the area of runtime or storage or network or something along those lines. Be like so you're thinking something similar, like you'd want to be able to label more detailed than incubating, like be able to add a, a like a tag, like a runtime tag. On. Yeah. Yeah. So today the way we do it is like there's the like project dashboards in GitHub and then mm -hmm. there are labels associated with it in terms of tag runtime or whichever tag okay. that we're talking about. That'd be like good to have. And it's just like a wild idea that came to me. Mm -hmm. So break down by tax for yeah. Yeah. So then we can like filter it down and then you know that can help us in terms of like get more insights on like how many projects are there under each tag. Yeah. CNCF and stuff like that. Okay. Gordon, any other questions you might have had or things that you would like to ask while we have everyone? Uh yeah. I know there's a lot of hype now, but uh, are there any plans to integrate some of this data with some Gen AI type of things? Um, yeah, eventually, yes. Yeah, um, there would be. Mm. Yeah, so you, if yeah, you want, where we're at, if where you, we're if at you want right. to make it really fast or something, you, you can actually just, just type a you know, question. Tell me about the health of this project, right? And it, yeah, and that's the goal once we get the data. Um, structured, clean, organized, I, I do feel like that um, then being able to query it um, with some sort of AI um, interface that you could just ask those questions and it could help infer things with you would is is definitely um, something that we'd want to be able to do. Do, do we also, so, so I, I, I got the idea that, uh, there are actions in terms of issues can be created on GitHub and things like that for every project. But mm -hmm. are you also considering a use case wherein if the health of a project falls below a particular threshold, then it automatically creates uh, an issue on, on the project or maybe it's in CFTOC or under whatever tag that it falls under and we can carve out that workflow. Uh, but basically determining that, hey, this project has is below this level of health due to these reasons and then what are the yeah. next steps? Yeah, I think, I think um, today 
we don't have plans to become like a, a workflow tool. We we want to be more of like, that's just that insights tool where you could find that. Now, that doesn't mean we couldn't add some sort of um, alarming or some sort of uh, triggering that if something grows by a certain number or, you know, because we'd, we'd want it to be both on the positive side and the negative side. But yeah, I think over time, if we get things, you know, we get the right the data is in there, it's clean, it's accurate, it makes sense. Um, all the health stuff is defined that uh, we start to really um, add it, add the tool very vibe and, and everyone feels really good about it. Yeah, then I think we could probably start to add some um, both positive indicators or negative indicators that would trigger some sort of event, you know, because, um, you know, that, that would, I mean, I know Jordan and I have talked in the past about, you know, potentially bringing some sort of notification area that then would be like, hey, these check out these three things. And two of them might be like project X grew by more than Z, you know, but um, and then it's like, oh, okay, cool. Let me go look at that. Oh, wow. That's really picking up some adoption or they have added um, the triggering event for adopt for adoption in the past 90 days. Something's happening or last year, something's growing that, that I should be aware of or vice versa. Something has really went off, of, you know, it's not increasing anymore. It's, it's decreasing significantly or, you know, some people have asked for like, oh, hey, I want to know when you know, a certain company no longer is developing on a certain tool um and that they, that would be valuable to them to know oh well yes yeah, some company was probably using cloud events and then over time though it just fell off and oh maybe they stopped you know and maybe that's more of the on the uh on the year look but um but yeah jordan go ahead if you want to ask anything um, I actually have follow-up questions for Kai, um, and this is actually not related to Project Health so much. I don't know how relevant it is to this group. Um, he was talking about the need for prospective contributors to, to get various insights on different projects to see which ones most align with their professional goals. Yeah, but I think that's a different call. Okay. Yeah, you can follow up on Slack. He, he dropped off already. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll um Jordan, I'll see if we can get you invited to the CNCF Slack. If not, I'll set it up for you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I just submitted a request. So cool. So one more question about the screen where you have uh, a button to open an issue. Is that is it the key? Yeah. This one, I, do you have integration with uh, GitHub that actually tracks uh, that that issue is actually open and in the state? Um, you know, I don't know actually. I have to I'd have to ask on that. Okay, so um, it might be useful to kind of show it here, like that issue is in progress, that is open or mm -hmm. closed. Or... Yeah, I think that um, that's a good question. Yeah, I wonder if we could do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Because that, that'll help people follow up if, if the issue is like mm -hmm. open but not in progress or, or yeah, has looked at. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. And so, who would be the right person? Um, Rajas or the team, or I can send this, uh, we can send this link to this design um, that could help us potentially refine this to do another iteration on what would need to be here. Um, what, what do you think would be the best way to do that? Sorry, what was the question again? So, so send like the person to send the changes or to? Well, so we believe that, we believe that this, this chart right here with the checks and things needs the most refinement. It's not, it, it's, it's directionally accurate, but I, we don't know if this is, if this would, um, we don't know if this checklist we want, we like the concept of the checklist, but we don't know the items that should go into it that would relate to the meter. And that would, that are, we, we're not confident that these are the right things. Right. So when I went through it with our engineers, they're like, 
hey, for instance, like we don't have security data, we don't have build data, release data, we don't have, how are we, how are we supposed to know, how are we supposed to go find out if there's open project meetings being held, right? Like how do we, where do we go get that data? And that's like, yeah, I, I get that. Um, and so what we're trying to, to what, what we would potentially like to do is iterate on this concept, which is the concept of the, the ca categories with checks, but we don't quite know what uh, tag or TOC would say would belong there. Very simple. Like what are the five things, the seven things, the 10 things that a system could could go grab? Like, you know, like instead of having to go look for everything in dev stats, it's just, it does the check for you. It just says, hey, yeah, contributors are contributors, you know, like this one's a really good one. Like there's an increasing number of contributors to the project, right? It's like we could go look and say, is it increasing by X percent or is it increasing by more than this many users or this many um, things? Or, hey, is there, we have this, to com the commit data by organization, right? So we could say, hey, you know, you know, like this one product, this cloud events, has two i think it was let's to it um so this crowd events has microsoft and we might say oh okay that 62 percent of the code activities was by microsoft and then 29 uh or other organizations did the other 38 percent um that may or may not be something that is important um but that's the thing is like i don't know today and i can send this and you can think about it I don't know today what things we could show that would be the five or seven simple things that would help you determine if it was if the project was healthy or not. And I don't know that these are the right things, but we like this format. I'm just not sure this is the right questions or statements or or buckets, if you guys, you know, so to speak. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you can start with the tag chairs, tech leads. Uh, you know, to help you refine it. It sounds like it's going to be iterative uh, over time. It's not yeah. going to be like a like a final solution from the from day one. So yeah, tag runtime is one of them, but then there may be some people in other tags. And uh, yeah. I think you already presented to the TOC, and obviously, I think it it should be open to the community members. So anybody within the community should be able to to weigh in. And that's uh, how it's usually worked in mm -hmm. all these meetings in open source, basically. Yeah. Just to add to what Ricardo said, uh, now the question is, is the source for this open, like, you know, we if there's like a GitHub repository behind this and Slack channel on CNCF Slack, that'd be like an easier way where after you present to say multiple tags uh, and TOC, a uh, community can actively go and create issues. And if they have any recommendations, send in PRs and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that's another way of like, you know, uh, linking a repository and probably like a Slack channel uh, behind this so that it's easier to collaborate. Okay. Yeah, I'll see about um, I'll see about what we could do for that. That makes sense. Yeah, it's about collaboration. Like, find a place where people can can collaborate and maybe have some sort of document or something to track things or mm -hmm. list out these things and basically say, are these useful? Or I mean, yeah, request, yeah, requesting feedback from community members and we like to. We like to uh, narrow this down to five that are really important. Okay. And get to a point, but, but you, you can iterate over, over some time, but at some point you have to make a decision too, right? So you, you can't just like iterate forever. Yep. Understood. Also, quick time check people will almost double the up. So uh, this was a great presentation, Kieran Jordan. Uh, I think we can have another iteration of this in any tag runtime meeting that you may like. Uh, and then we can also follow up on Slack. But thank you for joining people. I think we should be able to take any other questions on Slack. Thank you, Rajas. Great time. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Yeah.